Harvard astrophysicist named Avi Loeb has pored over the latest images and was struck by the, quote, non-gravitational acceleration of 3i Atlas. It moved faster than gravity could explain. It also looked oddly blue, when in past observations it was red and then green. That Harvard professor was kind enough to give up a Friday night to join me here live. And boy, do I have questions, Professor. First of all, should we be prepping? Um, we should monitor it. Thanks for having me. Uh, that's the way science is done. We shouldn't assume we know the answer about its nature in advance. It's a blind date of interstellar proportions. And my advice on blind dates is watch the other side before you say anything. Yeah, well, that's a good point. Let's talk about 3i Atlas and how it is different from all the other rocks and comets that have, uh, you know, come dancing into our solar system. Why is this one standing out, other than the blue light that I mentioned before? Oh, first of all, it's very big. It's the size of a city, five kilometers in diameter, a million times more massive than the first interstellar object that we discovered eight years ago. This is just the third, and it's so massive. Um, there might not be enough material in interstellar space to deliver such a big object to our neighborhood over the past decade. Uh, another thing is that it moves in the plane of the planets around the sun, which is very surprising, a chance in of one in 500. Uh, it shed uh, some uh, nickel without uh, much iron, which is very surprising because the only place we find nickel without iron is uh, in industrial production of nickel alloys. And uh, most recently, as you pointed out, it actually uh, showed some non-gravitational acceleration. There was uh, some propulsion that moved it away from its uh, original trajectory. And uh, I would have expected that it would lose 10 to 20 percent of its mass as a result of the recoil from that uh, mass loss. And uh, we don't see any cometary tail around it in recent days after it passed closest to the sun on October 29th. So all of these are anomalies. There are 10 of them. I didn't list all of them. And that's what makes me ask the question, is this technological in origin? Because when you have a visitor to your backyard, you better know its nature. Otherwise, it might show up at your front door. And uh, we can't afford to just uh, adopt the most likely interpretation, which is that it's a natural object. I, I have heard you say before that um, sometimes there, there could be a smarter kid on the cosmic block and that we should be, you know, paying attention because what if it releases probes? We do that. We go outside our solar system and we release probes. There's something about the, the glow that I've heard you mention before as well, that it glows uh, toward the sun instead of away from the sun. Is, is that the way most comets glow, away from the sun, and this one's all backwards? Yeah, that was during July and August, and uh, usually cometary tails are made of dust and gas, and th those uh, particles are getting pushed away from the sun by the solar radiation, the solar wind. In, in its case, we saw that uh, there is a jet pointed towards the sun, uh, exactly the opposite. It's called an anti-tail, never observed before except some optical illusions where we thought that something is headed towards the sun, but not really. It was always, for a good reason, headed away from the sun. So that's another anomaly that it shows. And uh, with all the others, uh, I'm recommending collecting as much data as possible in the coming weeks before we uh, figure out what this object is. Because, as you said, we, we sent the equipment out of the solar system, and maybe there was another civilization uh, that uh, did that a long time ago. Because, after all, Elon Musk may not be the most accomplished space entrepreneur since the Big Bang 13.8 billion years ago. So let me ask you this. Um, I think, I mean, listen, I've been stalking you. It's a bit weird, but I am fascinated with everything you say. And something you said really stood out to me, which was that it's supposed to be getting closer to Mars by the end of the week. And I wasn't sure if it was this week or next week, because I know that we have orbiters and rovers on Mars. Do you think that if it get, gets closer to Mars, our orbiters and our rovers will get a better peek at it and, and tell us exactly what it is that's coming our way? Yeah, in fact, it did that uh, a week ago. On uh, October 29th, it came within 29 million kilometers from Mars, and uh, NASA has uh, uh, the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter that has a, an excellent camera on board, uh, high-rise. That was a month ago, 
um, and uh, you know we haven't yet received the, the data from uh, NASA because of the government shutdown. So I very much hope uh, that we will see it soon uh, when the shutdown stops, and uh, we this data could give us the highest resolution image of 3i Atlas with a, a pixel resolution of um, one uh, of, of order. Uh, uh, 30 kilometers, this is still bigger than the size of the object, but it would inform us about the material flowing out of it, the geometry of that and any other details. It's three times better in resolution than uh, the best image we had before that from the Hubble Space Telescope. So there's a Florida representative as well as a megastar named Kim Kardashian who are demanding, uh, I think you are as well, that NASA open up the files and tell us what they have on this thing. What is it exactly you think NASA may have that they're not sharing? Well, they have this uh, best image of uh, 3A Atlas from October 2nd to 3rd. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, we would love to see it. Uh, they said due to some bureaucratic uh, rules, they are not able to release it. I don't think science should be sabotaged by politics, the politics of the day. And uh, I, uh, uh, I asked uh, Kim Kardashian if she is interested. Uh, I would love to have her on my research team of uh, 3A Atlas. Um, because she does show curiosity, which is at the foundation of scientific research. We should all be humble, curious, uh, to learn something new, rather than uh, arrogant, uh, uh, showing off with our expertise the way that some professionals do. I want to be on your research team. I just don't have 100 million followers on Instagram. <laughs> Professor oh, Lowe, good to talk to you. Come back again. Come back in any time. And uh, you are most welcome to join us if you are interested. I'll be happy to update you on everything. Oh, you're going to regret that. I'm going to call you. <laughs> Thanks, Professor. I appreciate it. Have a good weekend. Thanks for having me.